In Numbers 26, um, when God is taking the people into Canaan, I said previously on the last video or the video before that, that they were returning. And that stuck out with me that most of you probably didn't realize that this is where the tribe of Jacob, which became the tribe of Israel, started. And the important lesson about this, or one of them, because there are many lessons learned here, but I think, I think one lesson I would like to pluck out of it is in America, we've been told not to look back. This is wrong. You must look back. You must be involved with your heritage. You must understand your history. You must consider your past. so that I can clear it up a little bit from my standpoint is I would say don't look back and allow your past to stop you from going forward but understanding your history you you can't move forward unless you understand your history The, the reason why the people had to leave Egypt in the first place is because the Pharaoh did not understand the history of Israel. The Egyptian Pharaoh. Uh, he was a Pharaoh counterculture, the children of Israel, which is the reason why they became enslaved in the first place. These are all dark people, by the way but today we would call black on black crime. <laughs> you know, uh, dark people, I'm not, you know, they're not all the same darkness, but they're all dark people. Black on black crime. It wasn't until the Romans and the Greeks started getting involved. The Georgians pretty much stayed out of the way. The Georgians are uh, I'm sorry, not the Georgians, but the um, uh, the Germans are one of the oldest European countries ever, uh, and most dangerous. The Romans and the Greeks, the Romans were Neanderthals, just cold-blooded people. Um, and you catch a lot of that in, you know, a lot of the, anyway, you know what? I'm getting carried away and we're not ready for that yet. So we're talking about the dark people. So this isn't a matter of someone coming in and destroying. No, this is a matter of sabotage, sabotaging what we call today sabotaging our own cultures. Because <laughs> keep in mind what I said again in a previous video, the culture in Canaan now, before they get there, the culture in Canaan now is very similar to that of the culture in Egypt. Way of living. And the goal, if you're paying attention, is was for Moses, who studied in Egypt and was from the line of Levi, and studied in Ethiopia. 
which I think a lot of folks don't want. Midian, which is on the map here, which he was not permitted to move through. So he had to move back across and then move back across and move up to Moab. I don't have the map in front of me, but I believe that's the way it worked. And when I'm talking across, I'm talking about cross rivers. Because when he settled in, Sh in Shittim, the Jordan River was across from Jericho. So the reason why I'm explaining this to you is that it, it is dire that you don't allow someone to tell you that your history is not important. You need to know what battles you fought to get to, your, 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 your ancestors and your elders have fought to get you where you are so that you don't lose confidence when, when, the, when the enemy comes against you. I'm here to tell you, anytime you're looking to do something exceptional, enemies come and they look like you. I remember when I was first interested in uh, getting involved with ministry. When I graduated from school of ministry in 99 or 98, I'm not sure, 1998, 99, it's not that long ago. I just, I, I took all the certificates off. Um, I think it was 98, 99. Black folks didn't have, want to have anything to do with me. What we call black folks here in 2024 here in America. Nothing. Nothing. And I was considered to be, I think, pretty good. Nothing. The opportunities I did have did not come from black people. In truth, uh, my experience was discounted as far as education goes. Because it was a private school, it wasn't through, you know, one of the major players with the fraternities and things like that. You better know your history and the battles you're going to face when doing something exceptional. Why is it important for me to tell you that I had challenges growing up? Nothing against them. That no one is obligated to help you, especially if God didn't tell them to. But if you understand your history, you're able to dialogue and speak to spirits that try to hinder you. These spirits come through people, and the only thing that, you, that can kill a spirit that tries to hinder you is wisdom. Understand it. knowledge I'm not going to get off into the typographies or proverbs of that but you I'm, I'm pushing this hard you, you have to be familiar with where you came from where Moses was leading them was a territory that these particular people weren't familiar with but this is where they came from. He took them back. Out of Egypt. Back to their land. That they originated from. It was legally theirs. <laughs> and when you understand it was legally theirs. It has a whole new meaning taking over the land. I don't think I 
enough emphasis is put on history. We think, because you get these arguments all the, well, when you get older, my grandchildren, my brothers and sisters in Kenya, my brothers and sisters in Ghana, and whomever else this helps, God bless you on a journey from Genesis to Revelation. It gives a whole new meaning of fighting for what's yours and the difference between that and just fighting to take. In the Gemara, the Jewish belief system is, I mean, it, it all belongs to us anyway, so we're going to take it. The Ashkenazi Jew. In these stories here, there's no one trying to take something that doesn't already belong to them because this is where they came from. You see, you know, there is a moral difference if you understand your history. If you don't, you can be deceived. That's the importance of history. As we're going over the generations here in Numbers chapter 26, and I thought I was going to be out of Numbers 26, but I'm not because these things came up. Verse 10, Numbers 26, 10, it says, And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. This is a look back of what happened, I think, in Numbers 16, 17. I better get that right because this is going in, this is going for legacy. Uh, 1617 maybe not bear with me here uh, I have to do this video over <laughs> number 16 ah uh, 14,000 in plague, Moses unto the door of the tabernacle, the plague, Aaron's butt, uh, this, that, and the other. What was it, 15? Korah's rebellion, 16. Now Korah, the son of Izar, son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Ibrahim, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben. So, Levi, the uncounted tribe, and the oldest son. These are the two tribes. Levi being uncounted. Reuben being the oldest son. All right. With certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes in the assembly famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, uh, you take too much upon yourself in the whole congregation. Uh, holy, every one of them, and the Lord among them. Wherefore, then lift up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So, Moses' lineage and the oldest son, Reuben, hear me. This is understanding your history. Rose up against Moses. This was after they failed to go back into, they failed to take over Canaan, which belonged to them, but they didn't understand that. And then they started telling Moses, well, you need to make some changes. <laughs> right? You know, it's like, okay. And Korah, in and, and verse 5, and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, even tomorrow the Lord will show who he is, and who holy. So in other words, I tell you what, let's, let's figure this out. And we went over this before, but it's very important that we understand not where it originated, but some of the original issues and how we treat each other. 
Because again, son of Levi, Korah, went against Moses, O God, of Levi. Verse 9, small thing unto you that God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord. In other words, you want to do more than just the service. Now you want to tell us how to handle everything. In verse 11, for which cause thou and all thy company gathered together against the Lord, against the Lord. And what Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eliab. And they said, we will not come up. I think it's because they were scared. No small thing to bring us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness. You hear people like this today. All right, verse 17, take every man his censer and put incense in it and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers, verse 17. Verse 19, and Korah gather all the congregation against them uh, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the glory of the Lord appeared upon the all the congregation and the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron saying, separate yourselves, hurry up. Verse 22, and they, they fell on their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? Isn't that interesting? All of a sudden they see God and God's choice, and then they're like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. Verse, the Lord spoke unto Moses, speak unto the congregation, get up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Ibrahim. Ibiram, I'm sorry. And Moses rose up, went unto Dathan and Ibram, and the elders of Israel followed them. Since they wouldn't come to him, he went to them. And spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray from the tents of these wicked men. Verse 28, And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works. And he had to keep doing these miracles. And this is why I have a, a process called, I'm going to show you the miracle. I show you the miracle and you still fight me. I show you the miracle and you still fight me. Sooner or later, you will lose everything. Verse 29, if these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open up her mouth and swallow them up, that's where it came from. You, you got to listen to what I'm saying. This is crucial. If you, if you got lost... We're back here at Numbers 26. I'm, I was showing you where it came from. Verse 10, And the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed them together with Korah, with the leader. They weren't the leaders, but they bought in. How many, how many of you are buying into stuff just because you like the personality of the person telling you? Even though they're, they're speaking against God and God's way of operating, they're speaking against the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the king, seek ye first, 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 the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of being, his finished work. The finished work isn't, I know he died for my sins so I can continue to sin and just ask for forgiveness. The finished work is his righteousness, which is gives you the opportunities to correct your behavior to win. He gives you time. He doesn't open up the earth and kill you. 
It gives you time to repent. Change your ways. Do something different. Kingdom of God, do something different. Righteousness. Kingdom of God, do something different. Righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Do something different. You're probably never going to hear it that way again from anybody else. Do something different. If you have the kingdom, I used I knew this guy. I would ask. He grew up in the church. I said, "Man, why don't you read your Bible?" He said, "Because then I will become responsible for it." I don't want to do that. He literally told me this was a grown man in his forties, if not fifties. I don't want to do that. I will become responsible for it. It's true. But you have to understand your history. This is the history of those who go the wrong direction. What does it mean? Because no one explained this to me, so I'm explaining it to you. What does it mean to change your behavior or seek the the, the righteousness of God. Part of that is explained here in the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers 26, where he's breaking down all the family members and what they're going to get once they go back into Canaan. Judah, whose two sons died before they can get there, in the book of Genesis Thirty-eight in the book of Genesis, thirty-eight. He lost two sons. Judah was not a perfect man. And again, we're talking about the ancestors at this point. We're not talking about their kids. These are the. This is now the tribe of Judah. So the tribe of Judah is going back in, in Numbers chapters twenty-six, verse twenty. And the sons of Judah after their families were Shelah, the family of Shelanites, of Perez, the family of the uh, Perezites, of Zara, the family of the Zarites. And the sons of Perez were Hezron, the family of, Hezra, of the Hezronites, of Hamul, uh, the family of the Hamunites. Now don't get confused with this. I'm not trying to confuse you, but I want you to see that these are the families of Judah according to those that were numbered of them, three score, 60,500. Okay, well, what about the sons of Ur and On? They died. Why? Because they were wicked. Wicked because they knew better and they chose to do something opposite of the kingdom of God the hand of Moses. God took them out. Genesis chapter 38, 7 through 9, I think. I might be wrong. But I'm sure it's 38. Verse 7. But, you know, uh, the older brother was supposed to go into to his uh, uh, strike. That. I don't know if he was the older brother. But the other brother, Onan, was supposed to go in and procreate with the son to keep the lineage going, the brother's lineage going, and he decided to spill his seed because he didn't want to glorify his brother. So the type of shadow of that is we don't cover each other. So he died. You have to understand not just know, understand, and walk in the... Why? Because you don't want to make the same mistakes that I made, that other people have made, the ancestors and the elders. The history tells you how not to make the mistakes and how to succeed. How to seek the kingdom of God, follow suit, with the leader, in this case, the hand of Moses, walk with him, don't speak against him, walk with him, go through the challenges with him, the 
hand of Moses, kingdom of God, walking the path, going back to their land of Canaan. What 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 do you think you're supposed to take over? Fight the battles for your land. God, why just for your land? The, the two great tragedies. Listen to me. Two great tragedies. Two great tragedies. To me. Number one, don't follow the hand of Moses. Or number one, don't follow the kingdom of God. Or number one, live contrary to God's ways. Don't seek God for anything. All that means the same thing to me. That's tragedy number one. Tragedy number two, don't love God's people. It, it's the Ur and Odin thing. Don't cover your brother's sins. In fact, let me read that in Genesis 38 so you understand what I mean by that. Um, and then, I hope you get this. We're still in Numbers 26, talking about the family. This is the reason why I didn't want to go too far into the family lines, because they're so rich. Oh, jeez. It will, it, it will keep sending me back on these little trails, because I love this. Keep in mind, we're talking about the kingdom of God and his righteousness taking back the land. And bring the kingdom of God and his righteousness with you because that creates the kingdom of heaven on earth. The minute you think you're more important than your brother or you got all the knowledge of the kingdom of God figured out, you're in trouble. Because we can't do it without each other. So you can walk in the kingdom of God, but if you forget your brother, you're not walking in the kingdom of God. Or if you love your brother and you just live all kinds of crazy ways, you're not walking in the kingdom of God. Because <laughs> you need love and respect. You need obedience and sacrifice. You need power and submission. Genesis 38. And it came to pass at the time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned in to a certain Adolamite whose name Harah. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name Shua. And he took her and went in unto her. And she conceived and bare a son. And called his name Ur. And she conceived again and bare a son and called his name Onan. And yet she conceived and bare, and, and, uh, bare a son and called his name Shelah. That would be triplets. By Judah. I know I'm going long, but I want you to get this. You have to understand your history. When were there three sons before you got it? You know why? History repeats itself. That's why you have to know it, understand it, and, and use the wisdom from it. And he was a Chezib when she bare him, or bore him today we would say, in in, uh, Genesis, in in Genesis 38, 6, it says, And Judah took a wife of Ur, for, for Ur, his firstborn, whose name Tamar. We're not going to go there, but that's another story. 
And Ur, er, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him dead. And Judah said to Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, Tamar, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass, when he went into his brother's wife, Tamar, and he spilled on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. That displeased the Lord. So he was killed. Judah ended up because she played the whore. And uh, he ended up having a child with her. Tomorrow in verse 24, and it came to pass about three months after, not after that, but later, came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah, saying, Tomorrow thy daughter-in-law hath played the harlot, and also behold she with child by whoredom. It wasn't whoredom, she actually slept with Judah. Her father-in-law, who made a promise that wasn't kept. That's another story. You have to understand your history. But Paul, what, is, what does this all mean? Get this. So in going into Canaan, the purpose of numbering the families, you know, creating this, this system of operating so that when they go into Canaan, is so that they can come in with the kingdom of God and I'm speaking different language now, but the kingdom of God, the righteousness of God, so that they can take over the territory that belongs to them and they can live according to those principles being the kingdom of heaven on earth. There in Canaan, that was the goal. And they were returning to the land of promise. That's what it means to turn, return to the land of promise. But hopefully you're going in more educated. Now this same thing happens later on as well with a different group of people. <laughs> so it'd be good if you can get this parable for yourself. Cash App Dollar Sign Mr. Paul Dozier. Cash App Dollar Sign Mr. Paul Dozier. We are on a journey from Genesis to Revelation. I do not understand how long it's going to take but we're going to go we are going we're actually on our way i appreciate you taking this journey with me and with us all of us who are taking this journey together and learning these principles so that we can usher in the kingdom of heaven if these videos are a blessing to you, in other words, if you get anything out of these videos or these podcasts or whatever these things are, when you listen to them or see them, please like and share them with other people. If they benefit you, they will benefit others. God bless you.